ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो 10 चैप्टर 3 टेक्स्ट 19 ट्रांसलेशन एंड कमेंट्री बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्तिवेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद त्वत्तह अस्य जन्म स्थिति संयमान विभो वदन्ति अनिहात Agunat, Avikriyat, Tvai, Ishvare, Brahmani, Na, Virudhyate, Tvat, Ashrayatvat, Upacharyate, Gunai, Tvat, Tosya Janma Siddhi Sangya Man Vibho Tosya Janma Siddhi Sangya Man Vibho Vadantya Nihada Gunada Vikriyat Vadantya Nihada Gunada Vikriyat Tvaishvare Brahmani No Virudhyate Tvaishvare Brahmani No Virudhyate Tvad Ashrayat Vad Upacharya Te Gunai Tvad Tosya Janna Stiti Sangyaman Vibho Vadantya Nihada Gunada Vikriyat Tvaishvare Brahmani no Virudhyate Tvad Ashrayat Vadu Pacharyate Gunai Tvattaha 
are from your Lordship. Asya of the entire cosmic manifestation. Janma the creation. Stiti maintenance. Sangyaman and annihilation. Vibho O my Lord. Vadanti the learned Vedic scholars conclude. Any heart who are free from endeavor. Agunat who are unaffected by the modes of material nature. Avikriyat who are unchanging in your spiritual situation. Tvai in you. Ishvare the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Brahmani, who are Parabrahman, the Supreme Brahman. No, not. Virudhyate, there is a contradiction. Tvat, Ashrayatvat, because of being controlled by you. Upacharyate, Things are going on automatically. Gunai by the operation of the material modes. O oh my Lord, learned Vedic scholars conclude that the creation, maintenance and annihilation of the entire cosmic manifestation are performed by you who are free from endeavor, unaffected by the modes of material nature and changeless in your spiritual situation. There are no contradictions in you who are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Parabrahman, because the three modes of material nature, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, are under your control. Everything takes place automatically. Purport by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada, as stated in the Vedas. Natasya karyam karanang cha vidyate natat samas cha bhyadikas cha drishyate parasya shakti vividhaiva shruyate swabhaviki jnana bala kriyacha. The Supreme Lord has nothing to do and no one is found to be equal or greater than him, for everything is done naturally and systematically by his multifarious energies. Shweta Ashvatara Upanishad 6.8 Creation, maintenance and annihilation are all conducted personally by the Supreme Personality of Godhead and this is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Mayadhyakshena Prakriti Suyate Sacharacharam yet ultimately, the, yet ultimately the Lord does not need to do anything and therefore he is near Vikara, changeless. Because everything is done under his direction, he is called Srishti Karta, the master of creation. Similarly, he is the master of annihilation. When a master sits in one place while his servants work in different duties, whatever the servants are doing is ultimately an activity of the master, although he is doing nothing. Natasya Karyang Karanang Chavidyate. The Lord's potencies are so numerous that everything is nicely done. Therefore, he is naturally still and is not directly the doer of anything in this material world. Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurin Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shrishtam Manum Api Shatchiputra Matra Swarupam Rupam Tas Yagrajam Urupurim Maturim Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Girivaramaho Radhika Madhavasham Prapta Yasya Pratita Kripaya Shri Guru Tam Natosmi Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Ataf Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagarna Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakha Vitam Shri 
Guru, Vaishnav, Bhagavan, Tina, Smarane, Hoi, Bigna, Binashan, Anaya, Ashi, Hoi, Nijavan, Chita, Puran. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. No contradictions in the Supreme Lord. We learn from this verse. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada writes, Creation, maintenance, and annihilation are all conducted personally by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Srila Prabhupada also writes in the same purport, He is not directly the doer of anything in this material world. That seems to be a contradiction right there, doesn't it? No contradictions in him. So, what are we going to do? Shastra Yukti. Yukti means fighting. You can either fight with the Shastra, or Yukti also means bringing together, harmonizing. What do we understand from this? Well, Srila Prabhupada gives an example of the boss who has all his workers who are running around doing so many things. He doesn't do anything. The workers do everything. But they do it under his supervision, under his, according to his desire. He may just say one word, and one word is enough to set off a whole war. Just a, f a few words from the leader of a country can be enough to mobilize the troops and set the missiles going off. He doesn't do it himself. Does he or doesn't he? There's so much hatred of one gentle or not gentle man, a name beginning with P, famous person from Russia, who's castigated for killing so many people. He's just sitting peacefully in Moscow. He's not killing anyone. Doesn't seem to be. But then, is he or isn't he? By his command, by his desire. I, actually, I don't want to get into all the politics of all this, but I, I'm just using it as an example. I have no political agenda for or against Mr. P. But it's just an example that by his word, a whole big not a war, but something. <laughs> so much action is going on. So many people are risking their lives, losing their lives. Is he doing it or is he not doing it? Yes, he's personally doing it. But he's not directly the doer of anything. So both things are there. Just to give an example. From current affairs. There are several words here which are Desired or pleasing to impersonalists, aniha, aguna, avikriya. This explains Brahman. Aniha. How does Srila Prabhupada translate that? It, it means uh, neutral, not involved. How does Srila Prabhupada? Uh, free from endeavor. Mm. Aguna. No qualities. A vikriya doesn't change at all. Here we have the word also vadanti. Vadanti means, any of our Gurukul students here, what does vadanti mean? Say, that's not complete. It's one word in Sanskrit, but it's more than one word in English. Who says? I say, you say, they say, everyone says. They say, they say. But it's not stated who says. So, Srila Prabhupada has filled in. The learned Vedic scholars conclude. Here it's not just saying, but concluding. It's unpacked further. There are many words like this in sound. Just like the word asya. What does asya mean? We have in this Verse the word asya. 
Janmadhyasya Yataha. There's only one definite term in there, jan, Janmadi. Asya is indefinite. Yataha is indefinite. Asya means of this. Okay, very good. Of what? Vyasadeva doesn't say. Of what? <laughs> it's understood by all Vedantists, whether they're Mayavadis or Vaishnavas or Shaivas or whatever they are. It means of this material creation. So here also Srila Prabhupada has put Asya. In, in this context, in this kind of context is understood to mean the material creation. And also here, Janma, which literally means brought into being. <clears throat> so in this context it's understood to mean the material creation. <clears throat> Otherwise it could mean so many things, but particularly it's given in this context. Now, the learned Vedic scholars conclude in relation to Krishna that he is aniha, aguna, avikriya, and he's also Brahman, and he's Ishvara. And Ishvara gives, so he's without endeavor, without qualities, without change. Brahman, which is one, these are qualities of Brahman, without endeavor, without qualities, without change, these are qualities of Brahman. But he's also Ishvara. And Ishvara gives the sense of someone who's controlling someone else. Which doesn't mean undifferentiated oneness. Ishvara means there are activities. So how is it without endeavor, without change, without qualities? We're talking about a person here. The very easy conclusion, or straightforward, or Occam's razor conclusion. Do you know what Occam's razor means? You all know what that means? It's a very important term in philosophy. I, I don't know what the Sanskrit term for it is, but it means you take this, take the simplest explanation. Don't make any explanation more complex than it needs to be. <clears throat> I saw you, I, I was in the room, the door opened and Mr. X walked in. So you presume from this that Mr. X was in the other room and came in. You didn't presume that he materialized coming from another planet just when he opened the door. That's a, an extreme example. It's sometimes used to say that, well, you don't need any God to explain anything, so there's no God. You can explain it all in terms of matter, interactions of matter. Such is claimed, not by Occam, Mr. Occam, or he was a monk or whatever he was. Uh, that wasn't claimed by him. But we do run into difficulties when we have a non-endeavoring, quality-less, non-changing person. Because the very symptoms of a person is that they have qualities. The very symptom of anything is that it has qualities. Otherwise, it doesn't exist. Everything has to have some qualities. This, or characteristics. This is a diary. It's not a Srimad Bhagavatam book, it's a diary. And it has certain characteristics. It has a large, it has a red cover which was further covered with a picture of a calf milking from her mother. And so many, 
you could probably within a short time find 50 characteristics at least of this. So it has characteristics. Brahman is Aguna. This generally is understood to mean in the Vedantic context to mean free from the qualities of goodness, passion and ignorance, which further means no qualities whatsoever because everything in this world is a transformation of sattva, rajas and tamas. <clears throat> Including everyone and everything in it. Everything! What is that verse? Natvadasti prithivyang cha. How does that verse go? Divideveshu va punaha. How does it go? Look it up. There's nothing free from these modes of material nature. That's what us see pretty. Here, pretty V means is extrapolated to mean the whole universe also. Anyway, the purport of it is that there's nothing within the material cosmos which is free from the influence of the three modes of material nature. Did you find it yet? No. Okay. There's nothing which is beyond the with, without the influence of the material nature. And here we have Vasudev speaking to baby Krishna, addressing him as Ishvara. Krishna is within the material nature. He's a person within the material nature. Person means there are qualities. Within the material nature means he's in the realm of the three modes of material nature. Then how can he be Aniha Aguna Avikriya? How can he be Brahman? Which is Eko Advatiyam. It's one without anything else. Did you find it? Natadasi Priting Vyang Va. Divi Deveshu Va Punaha. Satvang Prakriti Jaya Gunam. Yet A B Syat Tribhir Gunai. Then translation there is nothing there is no being existing either here or among the demigods in the higher planetary systems which is free from these three modes three modes born of material nature. There's a lot in Bhagavad Gita, right? We just learn we get a list of fifty main verses and but the <laughs> they're all <laughs> they're all they all have so much import in them so it's good you young brains over there cram it in learn the bhagavad gita just just learn the whole bhagavad gita when you're young and if you're not a doofus then you can do it you can you can learn it all and later on you'll you'll get the benefit you can help me if i'm still alive in uh, remembering the verses for instance I'll give you a pat on the head. Is that a sattvic, a rajasic, or a tamasic pat on the head? You have to watch. Good touch, right? <laughs> so here we are, stuck. We're stuck here. We've got Aniha Aguna Avikriya, Brahman, who is Ishvara, and there's no contradiction. It's, it's all contradictory. Unless, 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 what's, what's the resolution of this? The Mayavadis, they have some very uh, un -Okamish explanations that Ishvara, first of all, the material energy generates and Brahman Eko Bahusyam, Brahman is one but became many, but still it's not, the whole material existence including Ishva doesn't really exist because there's only oneness. And then, well, how is it that we see not only oneness but twoness, threeness? Right here in this room we have maybe, how many? 60 ish, 70 ish. We have more than oneness. How is that? 
What is the explanation? Mayavadis. You're from Mayavadi Smarta family, right? You should know. Anivarchaniya. You can't say. It's inexplicable. Okay, let's go to Occam's razor now. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, as stated throughout the Vedic literature, is transcendental to the modes of material nature, and even though appearing within this world, remains transcendental. Etad ishanam ishasya prakriti stopitad gunai na yudjate sadatma stair yatabudhistadashrayaha. This is the godness of God, referring specifically to Krishna. Just before this, there's a whole description of Krishna in Dwaraka and his coquettish, Srila Prabhupada uses this word, his coquettish queens fluttering their eyelids at him and trying to seduce him, but he's not susceptible to their charms. And of course, later in the Bhagavatam, we find he is susceptible, susceptible to their charms. But intrinsically, from the Vedantic viewpoint, Krishna is unaffected. He's beyond the modes of material nature. He comes within the modes of material nature, but he's unaffected by it. And therefore, we have verses... Anyone, any verse in Bhagavad Gita which is relevant to this? Anyone? How about Avajananti Mangurha Manushim Tanamashritam Param Bhavamajanantom Amavyayam Anuttamam? Is that the right last line? Mamabhuta Mahishram. Yeah, I got that mixed up with the. Uh, what is that? Avyaktim vyaktim avyaktam vyaktim apanam manyante mama. Similar kind of verse. The rascals and fools, uh, they don't know that Krishna, or they don't recognize that Krishna is the supreme controller. He comes within this world. They think that he is, this is what the Mayavadis say, uh, the Shankara philosophy that Ishvara has accepted a human body, just like me and you, we have human bodies. <laughs> so they think, well, Krishna must have also. And therefore, he's also a product of matter. Krishna roundly rejects this proposition there was a uh, professor, I believe he was, oh, I don't remember his name, but uh, he wrote, he, he translated Shankara's Vedanta commentary, Shariraka Bhasha, is one of its names. And then afterwards he translated Ramanuja's. And in the preface to the Ramanuja translation, he said, seems to me to make a lot more sense than Shankara's, for which he came under massive attack from followers of Shankara philo philosophy. Yeah. You're not Indian. <laughs> How can you say? Just because you're influenced by Christianity. You know, well... Actually, it's not like that. It just seems to make a whole lot more sense. That's all. Even And it seems to follow the, the Sanskrit. Uh, that's what he said. You know, that it follows the... It unpacks the Vedanta Sutras in a more natural way. This Shankara's explanation, it's, it's very strained. So, young boys, study in the Guru Call. That's you got to learn all the Bhagavad Gita, and go out and smash those Mayavadis. Just like last night, we had Nrishim Hadev killing Hiranyakashipu. 
Where's Hiranyakashipu nowadays? He's so many descendants. But uh, more dangerous, actually more dangerous than these big demons who are very obviously demons, are those who propound Mayavad philosophy. Here's another verse that the uh, Shankarites hate. The uh, Rakshasim Kalim Ashritya Jayate Brahma Yonishu. <laughs> that the, the demons who weren't killed by the ones who escaped when Krishna was around, having killing them personally or through the Pandavas, they got born again in Kali. They didn't get liberated, so they got born again in Kali Yuga in Brahmana families. And that refers to Mayava, Smartas, who deny the personality of Krishna. So there you go, Gurukul boys. It's a tough assignment. You have no idea how tough it is. I don't think any of us have any idea how tough it is. I feel that notwithstanding the great progress that ISKCON has made in India over all these years, it's one major lacuna is people don't know that we're against Mayavad. They should be. Maybe it's, okay, we build temples and we have lots of congregational members and we feed the school children and what else do we do? Sometimes we give out shoes to the school children. Oh, that's the uh, Ritviks do that. We don't do that, yeah. And uh, yeah, we do all kinds of things, but people don't know that we are opposed to Mayavad, that everything is not all one. We should let pe let people at least know that we're not just another strand of general Hinduism. We are different from these Babas and Bapas and Amas and Sri Shri's and all these people. We're different. First of all, we have a philosophy, which these people they don't. I don't think they don't have any. Philosophy, I mean, it's a clear thing. We ask them what, if anyone asks them what the goal of life is, it'll just depend uh, which mode of nature is prominent in him at the present time. And uh, he'll say something clever, and then next time you ask him, he'll say something else. They have nothing clear. At least the uh, traditional Mayavadis, at least they have, a, they actually have a philosophy which you can engage with. You have to know Sanskrit and Mimangsa and Nyai, then you come to Vedanta, then you can engage, actually, on that level. Well, at least they have something you can engage with, but these other people, they're, they're just, they giggle and say something one time and something else another time, and it's just supposed to sound good. And these rascals, if it wasn't for them, I could have come to Krishna Conscious three years earlier. Because, <laughs> because my, my one friend at school showed me some books of Prabhupada. I must have been, no, it must have been two years earlier. I said, I, I don't see it. All these Indian gurus, they're all cheaters. That was the impression I got. I didn't even want to look at it. it took me another two years. And it may be many lifetimes that they're misled. People are misled by these cheaters. Nirvishesha shunyavadi paschatta desha tarna. Srila Prabhupada's mission was to fight with the impersonalists. He particularly mentioned in the Western countries, but when he came to India, he was more ferocious in this matter. Hare Krishna. Take blessings from Nrishim Hadev. Remember him. Of course, Nrishim Hadev protected Shankara also. He had a work. He had work to do. Shankara had work to do, so Nrishim protected him. Hare Krishna.
Any question, comment, or Hiranyakashipu like protest? Hare Krishna, you want to say something? And you pointed out that Pastor uh, Prabhupada says that ultimately the Lord does not. Uh, Creation, maintenance, and annihilation are all connected personally by the Supreme Personality of God. And uh, Prabhupada gives the mind of Prabhupada. Somebody may raise a question, so maybe Brahma, Shiva, it's all, it's all the Supreme Lord, it's all Krishna. They may give the objection, then you have to look in Shastra and find out. <laughs> Just like here, in the ultimate Shastra, Vidya Bhagavata Vadi, the ultimate Shastra, Srimad Bhagavatam, establishes Krishna. This is Vasudev speaking to Krishna using the word uh, oh, I'm looking at the wrong verse. Tvatta from you. Uh, then Twaya Twai, sorry, Twai in you. So it's to Krishna. And then you may come again, well, in Shiva Purana, it's also said Shiva is supreme. Then you have to, that's what I'm saying, you have to train up the Gurukul kids and have Shastra Yukti. Yeah, philosophy. It would be in some ways easier if at the time, as at the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, at least up to that time, people discussing such matters would do so on the basis of Shastra. But nowadays it's all just some sentiment. Now, even the Mayavadis in Varanasi said that. They, they said that after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had shown the philosophy to be wrong, he said, yeah, actually this philosophy doesn't satisfy us, but we were sticking to it because, you know, we're in this Sampradaya and... I say Chaute. We're in the Sampradaya and uh, what are we? we're in the Sampradaya, that's it. So we're going along with it. We know it's rubbish, but we're going along with it. And now they changed. Mm. Prabhu, good morning. I will so many doubts, but uh, only one doubt I will uh, ask him. But uh, every time, any time. Don't while you're driving the crane. Any time I explain these doubts, but uh, my memory loss, that's why I ask him. Everybody's memory loss, I don't know about my memory, 100% loss. Now, I will, Tamil asking, just explain. Mm. Prabhupada, one Udharanam uh, Kudukarare. Uh, He's giving fan, an example. Yeah, fan. So why don't Why don't you explain? Speak, speak in the mic. No, no, later. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada explained Pandra. Eh? Fan stop or naka or any stop or this mella mella da stop or on. So when the when we switch off the fan, the fan doesn't stop immediately. It it, it rotates for some time. It's but number one, bhakti gude mella mella da. Ninge on the morning or noon on the paichi head karo. So by practicing devotional service, gradually we make progress. No, I am doing well. I am doing well. But in a small way, I am doing well. I am doing well. But anyway. What is that? What is that? We have to take a bumper bridge. We have to take a price. Bumper price. We have to take a mind. In the, when he was young, he has the idea that uh, anything you do, quick result, fast result you will get. Anything you do quickly <laughs> then? What you get uh, like bumper price, like you just give, you do something and you get quick result. Like that he has the mind. When you Whatever activity you do, you get quick result. Yeah, the no, that's not true. <laughs> not that every activity you get a quick result. He has a mind like that. that he, he, has, wants quick he wants quick result. Yeah. But, uh, then worship the demigods. 
என்ன போலவே நிறைய நபர்கள் இத வந்து போறாங்க அப்படின்னு நம்ம சக்தி ஓம் சக்தியில இருக்கிற நபர் உடனே <laughs> 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 So what is the question? The question is that people are having mind that they should do some activity and immediately get result. Uh, just by bhakti also you get immediate result and then... People may think like that but that's not a fact, is it? It's not that you, just, you go into the college and immediately you get a degree. You have to work hard for four years. It's, they may think like that but it has... It has little connection with reality in especially in the matter of anything actually worth attaining let's leave it at that Hare Krishna Srila Prabhupada ki jai Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai Sri Sri Gornetai ki jai வாஞ்சாக்கல்பத்தருபேஷ்பாசிந்துச்சாக்கிபாசிந்துச்சாக்கிபாசிந்துச்சாக்கிபாசிந்துச்சாக்கிபாசிந்துச்சாக்கிப